How are y'all, you delicious people? I'm here today to review The Rocketeer. Uh, when actually fin finally sitting down and watching this film, I was honestly just like, I don't know, I think I probably built this movie up into my head to be just like heads and tails better than it actually was. I honestly just kind of left this movie just kind of disappointed. Like, I don't think there was enough actual Rocketeer within this movie. I think the actual villain is actually a lot more intriguing than the hero within this story. I kind of feel like if the hero was actually the movie star and the villain was actually a airplane pilot, I think that this movie would have been a lot more interesting uh, to go about uh, this journey with us probably investing in uh, this character. Uh, who is actually Cliff. Uh, because if anything, I'm just kind of like, yeah, I don't care for Cliff. Uh, I don't care for Cliff. I don't really care also for uh, really a bulk of what Cliff has to deliver in this movie. Uh, sadly enough, uh, not anything wrong with the actor. It's just like the overall story of this uh, just kind of falls flat up into a certain point where it's like, okay, now I think I can invest in this movie and get past uh, a lot of the just run around like things that doesn't actually really fascinate me within this movie. Uh, there is a whole story where we end up having uh, a character called Howard Hughes who ends up actually... Uh, telling us a story about them trying to sneak out this jetpack uh, from Germany. And immediately I'm like, shouldn't this have been the way that this movie had started? Shouldn't this have been the way of which that this movie should have been done to like have us eventually have this eventually be a handoff to Cliff? I honestly think that that whole story with Howard Hughes telling us the origin story of how this rocket came to be into America, I honestly think they should have taken the time to actually put that in the movie. I thought that would have been a lot, or I thought that would have been a lot better film. And plus also, I think there could have been a lot better uh, things going on in here to make this movie a lot more intriguing and eventually at a much more bigger scale because the only big scale thing that ends up popping up within this film is the movie towards more of the end uh, just because it has to. There has to be a big climaxy uh, like thing. Really, uh, I would say that, uh, that really there is a lot of chase around like moments we end up having a bulk of this movie having to have the villain trying to secretly uh, scout out or figure out who has the rocket and eventually who is otherwise tied to the person who could have the rocket, whether it is actually Cliff's girlfriend or whether it is PV, uh, his mechanical uh, sidekick. And uh, even eventually them eventually figuring out that it's Cliff himself who actually has the rocket. Uh, going on into this movie, I, I kind of really could say that this movie could almost still actually be done in modern time. And it would probably actually still work out. A lot of people could find that, like, no, like, if anything, we have all kinds of, like, Iron Man and, like, flying-like characters. Uh, like, what good would a, would a flying character still do? Uh, like, to me, I just, like, I think that you could probably build this character up as almost like a Captain America-like character. Like, action sequences that could benefit uh, this character not only flying... But uh, him, like, shooting his way out of a lot of things because, of course, he has a gun um, at his side. We really could also have this character, especially with uh, advancements in technologies and stuff like that, we can end up having it to be that it's just more 
then the whole rocket thing that actually makes his character what he is uh, within much more current time. Or even, like, again, have us go the Captain America route where there seems to be a lot of advancing things uh, that we end up having the heroes of this story taking from the villains uh, to try to use against them and so on and so forth. Uh, we could really and truly have like an arms race of, uh, of, of certain kind of things with, within this movie instead of the way of which that this movie just tends to just fall flat uh, for most of it. Uh, going into here, I think that reasonably uh, there is a lot of potential for a remake for this movie. Uh, plus with kind of the Disney budget. You could really just say like man. Like if they remade this movie now. Even if they stuck it into a still period piece. I think people would still be happy. About this movie eventually getting remade. Because they would know surefire that. Uh, with Disney behind it, it would be a much more lavish and much more big budgety like film, and people would probably be much more intrigued with that. Uh, and plus, also considering that this uh, Rocketeer like thing was done from a comic book, uh, really we could maybe have uh, a little bit more stories to pull from, and so on and so forth. I don't know. I just have a lot of hope for this movie. I think this this uh, concept still has a ton of potential. Uh, I still also think that uh, recently also uh, there could just be a lot of switching around uh, with certain characters to make them much more viable and making uh, make them much more in interesting. Uh, but yeah, it's just this movie just left me disappointed. This movie just kept kept making me think like. Man, what if they did this today? <laughs> what if they remade this movie? What if they made it uh, heads and tails a lot better than the original? Uh, like make people, uh, make people much more intrigued in this character again because this character has just kind of just like lived off of like one film for many of decades. Uh, but anyways. People could feel a bunch of different ways about The Rocketeer. Some people could have said that this movie sucked. Uh, some people could have uh, could still enjoy this Disney film and just like continue to watch it every once in a while. Or a lot of people may not have even heard of this film until me talking about it. So any number of wrongs of, of ways of which uh, that this ends up going into where it ends up going to. So uh, let's go into spoiler time. Because uh, I think it's about that time to... Spoiler time, spoiler time. It's about that time I'm going to spoil this movie. So, we have in the very beginning of this film, we end up having uh, Cliff, who is a test pilot of sorts. And we also have his villain, who is a movie star. Which I'm like, yeah, that's just, like... <laughs> like, man, if they could have switched those roles. Like, eh, because... I don't know how many superheroes have actually been a test pilot. We end up having like characters like Green Lantern or Captain Marvel or any number of kind of superheroes that have at some point been a uh, a test uh, pilot or whatever. Uh, like uh, any number of characters that have been uh, somewhere in the realm of... Uh, like they could honestly make the Rocketeer almost like an Iron Man like style of film and i think people would probably see that movie being uh maybe quite possibly fun so we end up having cliff who is this test pilot he is ending up desperately trying to get the best plane to make it to nationals and so we end up having Cliff, who ends up having his sidekick PV, his mechanical, his mechanic sidekick PV, who is to, like, oh, like, yeah, hopefully we can, like, uh, get this plane to go. So we immediately have Cliff, uh, Cliff. We end up having Cliff, who ends up going and uh, taking off his plane to eventually be in the middle of some car chase 
basically meaning that where his plane is located, there is a car chase between an, uh, between two FBI agents and two, uh, two thugs uh, that seem to be the ones who had stolen uh, the jetpack away from Howard Hughes. Uh, and so... We end up having, uh, we end up having one of these, uh, we end up having one of these thugs within the back of this vehicle firing upon Cliff's plane, which ends up having him leaking oil, uh, which ends up having him need to take an emergency landing, uh, for his plane. But before that ends up happening, we end up, ha we end up having the thugs who, uh, end up kind of circling around and kind of, uh, getting the uh getting the slip uh from the FBI agents to make it uh into this uh airplane hangar to where one of the thugs because one of the other thugs is actually dead we end up having this thug taking this jetpack and putting it under the seat of a plane to uh to eventually trade out the jetpack with a vacuum and we end up having this thug who ends up trying to uh try to get his way out of here and while he ends up trying to get his way out of here he smacks right into cliff's plane which basically ends up just destroying cliff's plane but also ends up uh injuring the thug who was to try to get away uh, with this uh, knockoff uh, jetpack. So we end up having the FBI questioning this thug and like noticing that it seems that there could be a, uh, a device of which that this guy has. So they end up trying to seek this thing out. And of course there is a vacuum that is of course crushed uh, that I guess they just kind of sum it up of just being like, well, I guess that could look like the device, right? Yeah, I guess it's just destroyed. Well, that's too bad. And so we end up having, we end up having eventually the, uh, the FBI kind of uh, questioning Howard Hughes about how this kind of, this device could just kind of slip through his hands and Howard Hughes just kind of like goes like, well, hey, like you guys should have found the thing. It's like, come on, like it's not that hard. Uh, but anyway, so like they have their kind of like talk about how like he could have easily lost this device. And it's like moving on. So we eventually have it to where Cliff ends up going and having fisticuffs with these FBI agents. Uh, because he is just so, like, annoyed that these people had just done this car chase while he was trying to fly his plane. And uh, it comes to blows between these this FBI guy and this and Cliff, but uh, Cliff doesn't actually end up getting arrested. Because basically, like, Cliff realizes that, uh, like, this plane being annihilated is basically his life's work. And now Cliff is right back to the drawing board yet again. So we end up, we end up having it to where both Cliff and uh, PV end up uh, also hearing that it seems that there was some, uh, there was also some kind of uh, vehicle uh, that was there within that uh, event. Uh, that had been brought by Bigelow, some like oil or gas or whatever uh, tanker of sorts that ended up also getting uh, destroyed via this uh, this takeoff. And so we end up having it to where Bigelow tells both Cliff and PV that, hey guys, you're going to have to pay for this. So we end up having it to where really Cliff and PV are like, oh crap, like, now we have to go back to the drawing board to figure out what plane are we going to take to the Nationals. And so we end up having Cliff, who ends up going and sitting in some other plane, to just like, well, I guess this is the only plane that we have left. Surefire enough that the 
uh, jetpack is actually underneath this seat. And so uh, both Cliff and PV try to get this jetpack uh, from out of this plane to see what the heck that it is. And so we end up ha having Cliff accidentally hitting the button to see what this does. And the jetpack ends up flying uh, through a portion of this hangar to smash through this office. And so we end up having these guys that are like, oh, wow, like this is interesting. And so we end up having Cliff and PV stealing a uh, statue to go and try to uh, test this uh, test this uh, rocket. And eventually we end up finding out that they start to see that eventually this rocket is really powerful, more powerful than they thought like it could be. And eventually we end up having this statue who's kind of like tied to the ground is end up uh, eventually flying off into the sky and then eventually ends up uh, flying back to uh, get to them because they assume that, oh, well, I guess like this statue is done for or this rocket, uh, this jetpack thing is done for. And so... We end up having the jetpack flying back to get to them, and eventually the jetpack uh, crashes. And so we end up having them realize, like, well, I think we need to make a helmet. <laughs> so we go on, and so we end up having it to where the thugs are to go and tell uh, Neville Sinclair, who is a very successful actor... And it seems that uh, this guy craves power and nothing is ever really good enough. It seems that when uh, he is to do a movie and he is to be outstaged by anybody, we end up having Neville who accidentally uh, stabs someone during filming uh, because they ended up uh, sharing too much of the camera. And so, like, I guess... If someone tries to best Neville in his acting, Neville ends up taking him down a notch. So, we end up having uh, uh, these thugs, Eddie Valiant, uh, going to Neville and telling him that uh, they could not get the uh, they could not get the jetpack, and so we end up having it to where. Neville ends up taking a guy named Lothar and taking him to the thug that is in the hospital to torture him until uh, this thug gives the information about where the rocket is. Because it seems that I guess when they probably investigated uh, this uh, jetpack a little bit further... They realized that that is not the actual jetpack. It's some vacuum thing that doesn't actually seem like the proper jetpack thing. And so they're still trying to find it. So we end up having it to where uh, this big thug Lothar goes to eventually torture this guy to, to ask where the jetpack is. And he, of course, tells him exactly where it, where it is. And so... We end up having it to where they end up trying to go and find uh, this jetpack and it is a non-existent thing. And so we end up having Lothar who ends up killing the uh, thug in the, uh, in the hospital. He ends up like uh, like twisting and turning him like a pretzel uh, to where he ends up killing the guy. And so we end up having the... Uh, we end up having eventually where the, uh, we end up having eventually Cliff ends up going and he is to have a date with Jenny. It seems that, uh, Jenny and, and Cliff are kind of on two different kind of worlds. We end up having Cliff, who is kind of happy with simple things, and we end up having Jenny, who is kind of desperate to want to get a higher-end uh, kind of establishment, a higher-end kind of whining and dining and stuff along those lines. And we end up having Cliff, who is simply happy with simple things like 
going to a diner that he has always gone to. And we end up having, eventually, while uh, Jenny and Cliff are having their dinner, eventually, uh, we have Jenny, who eventually ends up getting uh, soup all over her nice uh, dress or nice gown or whatever, uh, because we end up having somebody, like, uh, uh, playing around with something in the background, which ends up uh, landing in Jenny's soup. And so we eventually have it to where Jenny is to realize that her and Cliff are from two different worlds and Jenny is starting to realize that maybe she should trade up for a better model. So we end up having eventually Jenny running off to like be on her own and almost kind of dump Cliff. And because Cliff also kind of lied to her, we end up having it to where Jenny mentions that her and him are basically strangers to one another because Cliff will lie to her and not tell her the whole truth. So we end up having Jenny run off to go and be an extra in a movie because every single time Cliff has some air show or some uh, test run or something like that, Jenny is never actually there because she has some big role of being some extra in some movie or some really non-existent character in a film instead of being with Cliff with anything that he's interested in doing. But Jenny could also say the same to Cliff where uh, Cliff is never actually really there for her. So we end up having Jenny who is to go and be an extra in Neville Sinclair's film. Uh, she is a background piece and uh, we end up having Neville Sinclair that is putting on some almost like Robin Hood-ish like movie. We end up having Cliff who ends up having a sword in hand. And we end up eventually having him stabbing his uh, villainous counterpart. Because again, uh, this villain was kind of stealing the spotlight from Neville. We eventually end up having this fight scene uh, go on uh, to where... Cliff is also trying to get on set. He is trying to find Jenny. And eventually we end up having Cliff uh, stumbling upon some piece of scenery that ends up falling over and almost falling over on Neville. And we end up having Cliff who ends up saying like, well, hey, like I'm looking for Jenny. <laughs> like, hey, I'm looking for Jenny. And like it basically stops like the filming of this film uh, because we end up having a piece that ends up falling over and crashing. And uh, we end up having Cliff who is like, well, hey, like I'm looking for Jenny. So we end up having uh, Cliff and Jenny talking it out. And so we end up having Cliff who is trying to make amends and apologize uh, for how their dinner went. And we really have it to where Cliff is going to finally tell Jenny that he's working on something big. He's working on some engine that, uh, like this new, like almost jetpack like thing. And so while Cliff and Jenny are talking about this, we end up having Cliff or we end up having Neville who is kind of listening off to the side. Uh, and so we end up finding out that Neville is going to try to romance Jenny uh, to try to get to Cliff, to try to get to the jetpack. So, we end up having it to where Jenny doesn't want to hear anything that Cliff has to say about some jetpack or some whatever. Like, it really doesn't make sense to her, and so she's just like, like, dude, you say this all the time, that there's some new invention or something that you're going to work on, but working on something doesn't mean that you're going to get to the Nationals because Jenny ends up mentioning that uh, that eventually once Cliff actually wins the Nationals that both Jenny and Cliff are going to go on a real legitimate date uh, to a real fancy like dining establishment whatever. 
So we end up having Jenny who is like, I don't want to hear anything. I'm sick of this. And so we end up having Jenny walking off to be into the arms of Neville, who is like, well, well, Jenny, you know what? Like, I'm finally seeing you for the very first time. And you know what? Like, I think that we should go and, like, have a nice dinner together. Like, have you been exhausted by going to the Southeast or the Southwest or whichever restaurant? And Jenny is like, no, I haven't, because <laughs> I've never been there in my life. We end up having Neville, who is trying to schmooze uh, Jenny over, and really, uh, like, tempting her of, like, asking, like, well, hey, like, are you, like, are you interested in, uh, like, uh, going for the lead role, the lead female role? Like, how about we have that work out for you? And so Jenny's like, oh, my God. Because we end up having it to where Neville at some point wanted uh, both Jenny uh, to be thrown off the lot because... Uh, because Jenny ended up bringing an outsider to their, to their film. And when eventually Neville ends up finding out that, uh, Jenny is to be part of Cliff, which is to be part of the jetpack, we end up having Neville changing his tune to tell the people that we're going to throw Jenny off this lot that, oh no, 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 like, I was all wrong about that. Like, I, I changed my mind. It's like, no, this person is, like, should be doing this movie and blah, 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 blah. So, because cause Jetpack. So, we end up having it to where we are to eventually find that these thugs are going and trying to attach themselves onto Jenny and eventually try to figure out who Jenny is uh, a is having a relationship with uh, because they didn't exactly know. And so we end up having it to where they try to cling on to Jenny and try to follow her and the thugs do, but they end up finding out that it seems that Neville is consistently with Jenny. And so we end up having the thugs going like, well, hey, man, like we're trying to find this jetpack, but Jenny is spending so much time with you. And so like it kind of negates her being able to help us find the jetpack. And so. And so we have a tour. Neville is just telling them, well, like, you don't need to find Jenny. You just need to find her boy toy, her boyfriend, her her Cliff. And then that should be able to help you find uh, the rocket. So we eventually have it to where, uh, to where eventually the thugs are to make it to this, uh, are to make it to this diner. Uh, oh, also, we end up having uh, the Rocketeer uh, who is to go to some air show, and we end up finding out that it seems that there is some uh, pilot of Bigelow's who ends up uh, making a misstep in, in flying. It seems like he is a drunk, uh, a drunken clown-like person that is uh, kind of losing control of his plane. And so we end up having the Rocketeer kind of busting into action to try and take down this plane safely and try to protect this, uh, this pilot. And we end up having Bigelow who ends up saying like, oh man, this is all part of the show. And really they don't have an actual name of this character and so we end up having Bigelow, who ends up actually be uh, actually coming up with the name of the Rocketeer, and we end up having it to where uh, Lothar is to go to Bigelow, thinking that the Rocketeer is actually part of his show, and so we end up having Lothar, who ends up torturing and uh, trying to tear 
uh, Bigelow apart trying to figure out where the Rocketeer is. And of course, Bigelow doesn't exactly know. And so, but eventually we end up having these thugs lead them to this diner of where uh, both Peavy and the Rocketeer actually are. And so we end up having these thugs eventually questioning all these people of like, hey, does anybody like, does anybody know Cliff? Does anybody know the Rocketeer? And we end up having uh, this whole diner just kind of going like, well, no, like we don't know anybody. We don't know Cliff. We don't know this guy. Like never seen him in my life. I think he went to uh, Cincinnati or I think he left to like, I think he left to go to some other state or something like that. We end up having these people who are all really good friends, and so they're like protecting anyone who is have who is having any kind of seemingly trouble from anybody, and so we eventually have it to where Cliff is to uh, go into this, uh, who is to eventually go and change into the Rocketeer and eventually try and uh, take out these thugs, and eventually he is to. Uh, try and run out of this diner. Uh, and so we end up finding out that it seems that the rocket has had a uh, bullet hole put inside of it and it's starting to leak fuel. We end up having a uh, PV putting a thing of gum on it because he can't actually fix it. So we end up find we end up finding out that Cliff um, knows exactly where Jenny is and, uh, and Jenny is actually with uh, Neville uh, Sinclair. And so we end up having Cliff, who ends up disguising himself as some waiter at this restaurant to try and uh, get uh, Jenny either some information via in her soup or to try to uh, get her away from Neville so uh, they can talk to one another. So... We end up having we end up having Cliff who ends up kind of doing a horrible job at being a waiter of Jenny and Neville to eventually uh, Jenny eventually needs to say that she needs to go to the bathroom to talk to Cliff. And so we end up having Cliff who ends up grabbing Jenny and is telling her it's like, well, hey, like, um, the guy that you're with, Neville, is actually a real horrible guy. If anything, he's actually a villainous dude, and he is a part of uh, these thugs that are going and trying to uh, do bad things to people, and blah, 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 blah. And so we end up having Cliff, who ends up having to tell uh, Jenny, which I think this is <laughs> like a really fun reveal, where we end up having Cliff tell Jenny, it's like, I know this might come as such a shock, but Jenny, I'm the Rocketeer. And we end up having Jenny going like, who? <laughs> He's like, I'm the Rocketeer. Like, don't you know the flying guy? Like, haven't you heard of any of this? And we end up having Jenny who was like, well, no, like I've been busy doing a lot of acting gigs. I don't know anything about the Rocketeer. And Cliff is like, dude, you've been sleeping over under a rock? Like, how could you have not have heard about this? So we eventually end up having Cliff, who is to eventually realize that it seems that there are thugs uh, starting to appear upon this, uh, this, uh, this establishment. And so we end up having Cliff, who needs to forcibly... Uh, escape to be able to uh, get back into the gear of the Rocketeer to try to fly out of here. And so we end up having uh, Lothar and a lot of his other uh, thuggish like characters going and chasing the Rocketeer down. And we end up having it to eventually uh, Cliff eventually ends up uh, escaping and skating away. We end up having Neville who ends up chloroforming uh, Jenny to get him to his home. And so we end up having Jenny who is now awakened uh, within Neville's home, not shackled, not anything. And so we end up having 
Neville who is to basically tell Jenny like everything that she's ever wanted to hear. Uh, basically trying to romance her and persuade her that uh, that he can like he can help her be like the best actress that she can ever be and all kinds of things if only he would like if only he would stay with her and we eventually have it to where Denny is starting to realize how all of these lines are actually sounding very familiar that basically she is starting to realize that, this guy is not a person that is going to really Shakespearean uh, Jenny into romance. Uh, we have it to where uh, reasonably Neville is just a fabricator. He's just an actor. He's just a facade. To where we end up having Jenny who ends up going and trying a dress on for Neville just so that way she can try to uh, uh, injure Neville so that way she can try to slip away from him. Uh, but sadly enough, we end up having a Jenny trying to slip away, but that ends up just going nowhere to her. Eventually, uh, Neville is still like holding on to Jenny so that way uh, he can use her as a bargaining chip. Uh, so that way he can get the rocket. So we eventually have Cliff who is going to eventually have to confront uh, confront Neville. And here's also the thing. We end up having Jenny who ends up kind of stumbling upon uh, or around in, into this house to find out that... Neville is actually not at all who he says he is because Jenny ends up stumbling upon some radio station that uh, that is seemingly actually connected uh, to some Germans. And we are actually ending up finding out that Neville is actually a big, gigantic, like, spy of sorts. And he is a uh supposedly quite possible german nazi or something along those lines so and plus two you would have thought that like if neville was actually a spy of sorts you would have thought that he would have actually like broke out his like german accent but i guess neville probably didn't have one so like that would have been way better off for us to like all of a sudden have this reveal of this guy being an actual German guy and he actually finally broke character. And I think that would have been fairly fascinating. Uh, but anyways, we eventually have seemingly Neville uh, going and, and uh, trying to make a break for it. So we end up having Neville who ends up... Uh, ends up going with uh, Jenny to meet with Cliff. And when uh, Cliff is also there, we end up also having Eddie Valentine there. And so while we are to have this going on, this whole exchange or this kind of trade-off of, uh, of this rocket, we end up having uh, Jenny spill the, uh, spill the beans uh, to Cliff that uh, that Neville is actually a is actually a Nazi and whatever and along those lines and it seems that we end up having Cliff eventually uh, making it to Howard Hughes to where eventually Howard Hughes is to eventually mention that there is some big, lavish uh uh nazi that seems to be some kind of spy of sorts that is kind of controlling everything uh and we end up having cliff make the consensus that it has to be neville we end up having it to where we have howard hughes who ends up uh explaining to us that uh they had tried to sneak this rocket out of germany and that eventually Germany had some big lavish video 
of what they were going to actually do with this rocket, which I was like, what was the point of that? Like, I guess telling their game plan of if they were to get this rocket and what they were going to do with it, which I thought was kind of a waste of time. But anyways, we eventually have Cliff who makes his way to uh, Neville to try to trade off the rocket uh, to uh, Neville. But we end up having Valentine eventually realizing that Neville is actually this Nazi spy. And we end up having uh, Eddie who is like, hey, man, like, I'm full blood American. Like, I'm not going to... Uh, ally, alliance myself with some kind of Nazi. Like, this is not going to happen. And so we end up having Neville's guys turning on Valen, uh, Valentine's guys, and there is kind of a standoff going on in here. But eventually we also end up having the FBI guys making their way uh, to this to just kind of balance things out to where there ends up being a giant shoot-off to where... Eventually, the Rocketeer ends up noticing that Neville and Jenny is getting away onto this blimp. And so we end up having the Rocketeer, who ends up deciding to, of course, try to make his way to fly up there to, of course, uh, get to the blimp to get to Jenny and to get to Neville. And we end up having Eddie uh, Valiant, who's like, go get him, kid. So we end up having the Rocketeer flying into the blimp and... We end up having him, like, stumble upon trying to get on to the actual blimp. We end up having uh, the Rocketeer who ends up just kind of, like, grabbing onto a piece of the blimp and trying to hold on because, like, whoa, like, <laughs> kind of sliding off here. It's a little bit difficult to get onto this blimp. So, eventually we end up having Cliff making his way into the actual, uh, into the actual blimp. To where we have Neville who is going and uh, shooting uh, one of his uh, alliance members because they need less weight onto this blimp. And so Neville kills some guy and he ends up flying off the blimp. And so we end up having Neville telling one, of, telling his pilots, like, dude, we need to get to the motherland uh, or the fatherland. So we end up having Cliff making his way into the blimp. And so we end up having, of course, Neville holding Jenny hostage. And so we end up having, of course, that uh, now Cliff is going to trade the, the rocket for Jenny. And so we end up having it to where Cliff ends up going and taking the gum uh, that was kind of uh, letting or preventing uh things from leaking out of this rocket and we end up having cliff trading uh the rocket for jenny so we end up having uh we end up having neville who's like well yeah like i'm gonna go and i'm gonna fly this rocket i'm gonna fly this rocket out of here like this is great and so we end up having neville who is to fly with the rocket and, of course, the alcohol or whatever is leaking outside of the rocket. And so we end up having Neville flying out into the sky to eventually explode, killing him. And so we end up having uh, Jenny and Cliff realizing that they need to get off of this blimp. It seems that there is... Uh, some kind of leak going on of sorts and, and whatever what have you to the point of them realizing that this blimp at some point is probably going to explode. So we eventually have it to where uh, seemingly Cliff and Jenny try to make it to the very top of this, uh, this blimp. And so we end up having a character of um, Othar who is also on the top of this blimp as well. And, we end up having it to where this blimp is starting to explode piece by piece by piece. And so we end up having both PV and Howard Hughes are flying with their bizarre helicopter plane. And we end up having them going and dropping a ladder for both uh, Cliff and Jenny to grab onto 
so they can make their way out of here safely. And so we have Lothar, who ends up dying in the explosion, but we end up having uh, Cliff and Jenny safely, uh, safely away. So everything ends up getting resolved. Uh, everybody seems to be happy, and it seems that we end up having Howard Hughes, who ends up deciding to give Cliff um, his best plane to have Cliff be Howard Hughes's pilot. And we end up having Howard Hughes delivering this plane and he ends up kind of walking off and Cliff is realizing that, oh my God, this plane is mine. Uh, Tori even has his name off to the side of the plane as well. And so we end up having Cliff who's like, oh my God, like this is mine. And we end up having PB is like, well, yeah, like I guess it is. And so Cliff is like, well, I didn't get to thank him, and Peavy's like, dude, I think he surefire saw your face when when afterwards. So, we end up having Cliff, who has a plane for Nationals, and we also have it to where uh, Cliff is realizing how important Jenny is to him, because at some point when, uh, when Cliff and Jenny were at this uh, restaurant, we end up having uh, Cliff said if anything was to happen to Jenny that he would lose his mind. Uh, and so we really have it to our uh, cementing that both Jenny and Cliff are going to be a good couple and they're going to last forever, I guess. So with that said, that's the ending of this movie. Uh, really, I kind of probably rushed through little bits and pieces like transitional parts and whatever, especially around that point of just me going into like, Okay, how do we get from the ending of this movie? Because there is like the whole diner part to the transition of the uh, of the the shootout part. I'm like, how did we get there? I didn't remember. Uh, but with that said, I don't know. I just I think I really got one over uh, really just by the point when Jenny was in Neville's home. I think once we start there in that movie and we go on forward, I think that's what actually wins me over for the rest of this movie. I think everything before that, I just didn't care about. It was just kind of really, uh, like, it was just kind of really just uh, a lot of monotonous chasing around for no reason. And we really had it to where, like, it was really just saying, like, well, we couldn't do a lot with this whole Rocketeer-like character, so... <laughs> Like, there's not much we can do with a flying man in this movie. So, yeah, gee golly, like, this was all we could really do. This is all we could really attempt. And this is the best we could do. Uh, so, yeah, it was just... I wish this movie would have been a lot more exciting. Um, I wish there was a movie... I wish there was a movie eventually going to be done uh, really rectifying this story and making it just a little bit better. I think if they had the Howard Hughes story... Uh, and really had that be a handoff kind of thing where we end up having seemingly uh, the guys had gotten back from Germany uh, with this jetpack to eventually have that person eventually die uh, and give that off to uh, Cliff. And I think that that would have probably been a much better story. I think that that would have been a much more intriguing story. And uh, yeah. So with that said, I think I'm going to get out of here. Goodbye, everybody. Bye, everybody.